about 15 years ago, a museum in America was given a donation of a photo album. In many ways, it's not really that interesting. It has very normal, everyday photos in it. Photos that, apart from the fact that they're from 70 odd years ago, you might have. Pictures of people relaxing on holiday, picnicking with friends, decorating the Christmas tree, with the family dog. What makes them interesting is who the photographs belonged to. They belonged to a German man named Karl Hoppe, and they were all taken in the summer and autumn of 1944, during the Second World War. Hocke was a Nazi, a supporter of Adolf Hitler. They were all taken in the area around the Polish town of Oswiecim, which is now better known by its German name, Auschwitz. I would like to tell you about another individual. This is Hannah Brady, a Czechoslovakian girl whose family fell into the category of people the Nazis didn't like. She was Jewish. Again, we have really normal pictures of her, with her brother George, with her mum, we even have some pictures that she drew. She liked to ski and she liked to paint. She could be any one of you. During the 1930s and the first half of the 1940s, the Nazis, led by Adolf Hitler, were responsible for the deaths of around 11 million people. Six million of them were Jewish people. We call this the Holocaust. These people were killed not because they'd done anything wrong, but because the Nazis, for various reasons, didn't like the way they lived their lives, lifestyle choices, culture, religion, political beliefs. The Nazis set up various concentration camps. They ran people up and took them to these camps to be killed. The camp at Auschwitz was the biggest, and over about two years, from 1942 to 1944, one and a half million people were murdered in just that one place. Karl Hocke was the second in command of this camp. Hannah was taken to a concentration camp when she was 11. Two years later, she was transferred to Auschwitz and was murdered with poison gas as soon as she arrived. Two individuals, two very different stories. Today is Holocaust Memorial Day. It's 77 years since Auschwitz was liberated. The Holocaust was built upon lies. Lies which were spread by a government of hatred to stir up anger and contempt towards people who, in reality, were just like them. They shared towns, they shared schools, they shared jobs. But to the Nazis, these lies were a way to divide people and control them, and ultimately paved the way for genocide, the mass murder of an entire group of people. Through the lessons from Auschwitz scheme, we have been taught not only to rehumanize the victims of the Holocaust, but to humanize the perpetrators. They were people who made specific choices. And history has repeated itself. In Rwanda in the 1990s, Tutsis and Hutus tried to destroy each other. We see similar things happening to the Uyghurs of Xinjiang in China today. The Holocaust stands as a warning against inaction. And that is why all British schools are required to teach students about it, to teach us to identify genocide before it's too late. It is sad to say that there have been enough genocides that we can now predict how and where they will occur. The process is gradual and slippery, putting society downwards. It begins with natural social behaviour of spotting differences between groups of people based on religion, race, or ethnicity, creating an us and them. For many people, this does not limit their respect for each other, or in the media, governments, and propaganda, group people by what makes them different. Rather than similar to the majority, people begin to overlook individual members of this group and only consider the whole. These labels, when attached to negative stories, can serve to turn unique individuals into just another problem. Migrants, Jews, Gypsies, Homosexuals, Muslims. We lose empathy for these individuals, which often leads onto dehumanisation. These labels are used to equate the victim group to animals or diseases, removing their humanity and the public sympathy. We need to know that how we speak 
and what we take matters far, far more than you would probably guess. Parents, neighbours, teachers, students, customers, friends. In society, without realising, we all play these roles to hundreds of people around us. We are collectively a jigsaw that has the ability and the potential to fit together seamlessly. But, due to the damaging attitudes and choices of some individuals, the jigsaw remains broken. In today's climate, where we have the power to spread a message at the click of a few buttons, it magnifies the importance of taking responsibility to educate ourselves on the truth from every perspective, to not give attention to those who spread falsehoods, to be a force for good with empathy and compassion. There is no right time to do this. Change is always possible no matter how hard it may seem to be. The power to make these changes lies with you, your choices, your decisions, and your attitudes. Hannah was too young and too powerless to have a choice. Karl Hocker knew what the consequences of his would be. His choices, and those of thousands of others like him, led to the murder of millions of people. This could only happen because thousands more didn't challenge the hatred of the Nazis. And before most people had realised, the Nazis had made speaking out against them something that could have cost them their life. Today's society is thankfully nowhere near that point, but the story of the Holocaust and of the many other genocides that have taken place since is that no society is safe from falling for easy hatred, falling for lies and liars being manipulated to hate rather than love. You get to decide what you can do. You can choose to support others rather than hurt them. To reach out to those you don't know rather than ignoring or belittling them. You can accept that embracing differences makes the community stronger rather than weaker. These are acts of kindness, not acts of weakness. Together they make communities stronger. And by taking these actions, you can honour those who were murdered in the Holocaust because it shows that you're working to stop anything like it ever happening again.